autobiography of Malcolm X is a 20th century literary classic which has inspired several films, books, artists and documentaries. However, despite its title, the book itself was not written entirely by Malcolm. In fact, it was co-authored, then edited and finalized by Alex Haley, the celebrated author of Kinta Kunte and an established authority within the world of journalism, who had written articles on Malcolm and became fascinated with investigating and conveying his story. Alex Haley later revealed that Malcolm had initially been very hesitant about publishing an autobiography, which prompted Haley to persist with the idea until Malcolm succumbed to the proposal and the two thus began to work together towards the biography in the year 1962. From the outset of their collaboration, Malcolm had insisted that the biography should be a tribute to his teacher and guide, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, whom he intended to dedicate the book to as a testament to the transformative influence that the Nation of Islam had on his life. It was also a gesture of loyalty by which Malcolm had hoped to endear himself to Elijah Muhammad and to earn the grace of his beloved mentor. According to Alex Haley, the initial drafts were very difficult to format, given the fact that Malcolm's literary style was still deeply anchored in the political speeches he had been so used to preparing for his live audiences. Alex Haley struggled to orient and redirect Malcolm towards the literary style that would be more introspective, intimate and insightful for a book that was meant to convey Malcolm's personal story and not that of America's policies or that of the Nation of Islam. The breakthrough moment arrived when Alex Haley began questioning Malcolm X about his mother, Louise Helen Norton Little, and the conditions in which he and his siblings were living under during the period in which she was sectioned in a psychiatric hospital following her husband's brutal murder. It was only then that Malcolm X lowered his guard and finally broke loose from his formulaic and academic discourse, sinking deeply into his earliest memories to uncover his childhood traumas. It was at this point that the autobiography of Malcolm X truly began to develop. Over the course of approximately a year and a half, Malcolm X and Alex Haley would continue to correspond and collaborate, meeting one another in cafes or in Alex's office in order to transcribe Malcolm's handwritten notes as the manuscript was slowly being refined. However, the project took several unexpected turns following Malcolm's assassination on February 21st, 1965, resulting in Alex Haley having to complete and finalize the book by himself, shortly after which he was informed that his contract with the publishing firm Doubleday was cancelled, as the company had decided to sever all ties to the project soon after Malcolm's assassination, fearing reprisals as the autobiography was considered far too controversial and the circumstances surrounding Malcolm's assassination only added to that controversy. Though it was unknown to Malcolm at the time, from the very beginning there were some indications that the project itself may have been a covert operation aimed at further damaging the nation of Islam and its leadership. It was in fact reported that Alex Haley was allegedly entangled with the FBI in as early as 1962 when a fellow journalist named Alfred Bolk collaborated with Haley to co-author an article for the Saturday Evening Post which was published a year later in 1963. The article is entitled The Black Merchants of Hate and was a hit piece intended to discredit and distort the image and mission of the Nation of Islam. It later transpired that Alfred Bulk had struck a secret agreement with the FBI in order to gain access to classified and compromising information about the Nation of Islam that would enable the two journalists to castigate and marginalize the black Muslims and their progress within the mainstream civil rights community. In return for this exchange of information, the FBI would exploit the negative media coverage and controversy in which the Nation of Islam would then be embroiled in following the publication of this article so as to serve as further evidence for its ongoing investigation against the nation's leadership. It has also been reported that Alex Haley exploited this information which was acquired through the FBI 
from his colleague Alfred Bolk to serve as a template and an underlying current throughout certain passages in the autobiography of Malcolm X. The final revision was eventually published, however Alex Haley's motives appeared unclear to many of Malcolm's close associates as details surfaced concerning Haley's identity as a committed Republican and an integrationist who despised the Nation of Islam, its mission and its message. Haley also rewrote many of Malcolm's passages without notifying him during the time in which the two men were meeting and working alongside one another. Following Malcolm's assassination, Haley would remove three entire chapters from the book altogether. Although Haley's version of Malcolm's autobiography is still the most popular and recognizable piece of literature on Malcolm's life, there are many underlying concerns regarding its veracity and authenticity. Thus, the autobiography never completely conveys Malcolm's innermost passion to establish justice and equity in America, nor does it remain faithful to his raw opinions on certain topics, which Haley judged to be far too controversial for print. However, by piecing together the loose ends of what has been gathered from Malcolm's personal journal entries and through written correspondences with his closest friends, we hope to convey a clearer representation and a more insightful perspective into Malcolm's development as he travelled the world and experienced new realities. By referencing and piecing together many studies, research papers, books and classified documents including Malcolm's handwritten notes and travel journals, all of which have finally been brought forth into the public domain, we thereby intend to explore many of the unanswered questions to themes and subjects that have fascinated millions of people since Malcolm's untimely departure in 1965. We shall be exploring themes ranging from Malcolm's quiet observations, personal opinions and moving encounters while he was travelling throughout the Middle East, as well as questions pertaining to the more pressing subject of Malcolm's intellectual, spiritual and strategic objectives during the final phase of his life. To attain this objective, we shall rely heavily on archived copies of Malcolm's personal journal which he took with him on his final world tour in 1964 and had intended to compile and publish independently upon his return to the United States. Malcolm's travel journal is saturated with deep introspective thoughts and profound expressions of his new world view as a Sunni Muslim and as an advocate for global human rights. These intimate records will provide a rare insight into Malcolm's spirit as conveyed through his own words. Malcolm also sketched out preliminary plans of what he had hoped of achieving through his new established organizations, the Muslim Mosque Incorporated and the Organization of African American Unity. With plans of publishing his self-authored book, Malcolm had hoped to support his family financially while also delivering a series of presentation lectures to his community giving them a much needed insight into what was happening in other parts of the world. Malcolm never got the opportunity to complete his work and the loose pages replete with handwritten notes were left unattended alongside a pile of Malcolm's possessions, photographs and other memorabilia that were discovered in a storage bin somewhere in Florida, waiting to be sold at a regular auction in San Francisco. Fortunately, Malcolm's family was able to rescue these priceless relics just in time with the help of an attorney. Today, a significant portion of these historic items are preserved and guarded in Harlem's Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture, where transcripts of his letters, notes and journals can still be accessed by scholars, historians and researchers.